give you news at the speed of nanosecond, but we also break it down with up-to-date analysis, informed opinions, and distinct professionalism. That's why you love us. <laughs> at about 88 from FM, your go-to station. It's midday. Good afternoon, here is Global News and I am Monique Ola Ugidon in the news. Fighting continues in Sudan despite ceasefire agreements. U.S. and South Korea seal this security deal. Thai police arrest woman for killing 12 friends. This is the news. The evacuation of 2,400 students and other Nigerians trapped by the ongoing conflict in Sudan took off on a slow start on Wednesday as only 15 out of the 40 buses required for the exercise were provided. Although the federal government hired 40 buses for the repatriation of the citizens from Khartoum and other cities to Egypt, but only 10 buses were available as at Wednesday morning while additional five buses were provided later in the day. Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyema claimed that the federal government had been charged $1.2 million for the evacuation of Nigerian nationals out of Sudan. A cited insecurity in Sudan for the high costs of evacuating Nigerians. On Tuesday, the government had said that the evacuation of about 5,000 Nigerians, including students stranded in Sudan, would commence on Wednesday. To expedite the repatriation, the government, through the National Emergency Management Agency on Tuesday, released 150 million naira for hiring the bosses that would convey the citizens from Sudan to Cairo in Egypt. Meanwhile, fighting is continuing in parts of Sudan despite a 72-hour ceasefire. Fighting broke out near TV and near TV and radio buildings in Omdurman, the city and joining the capital Khartoum. Reports say there is no fuel, lack of doctors and people are struggling to access food and money. Sudan's army chief has reportedly approved extending the ceasefire due to expire on Friday for 72 hours. General Abdel Fateh al boran gave initial approval to the proposal from the regional African bloc intergovernmental authority on development. The current ceasefire began on Monday, bringing a pause to a conflict which erupted on 15th April amid a power struggle between the leaders of the army and the rapid support forces. Away from that, African minister in UK Foreign Office, Andrew Mitchell, has warned that an end to the ceasefire could result in a humanitarian catastrophe in Sudan. It told the Foreign Affairs think tank Chatham House that it is essential that a ceasefire is maintained and that a political process is secured. I said the UK will continue to work tirelessly to help bring an end to the violence and provide vital humanitarian relief. Earlier, UK Foreign Secretary James Cleverly said he could not offer guarantees about evacuations from Sudan. And now the U.S. and South Korea have secured a landmark deal to counter the North Korean nuclear threat. Washington has also agreed to periodically deploy U.S. nuclear-armed submarines to South Korea and involve Seoul in its nuclear planning operations. In return, South Korea has also agreed to not develop its own nuclear weapons. The U.S. President Joe Biden said the Washington Declaration will strengthen the Allies' cooperation in deterring a North Korean attack. Concern has been rising on both sides about the nuclear threats posed by North Korea. You're on to Global News from Adaba 88.9 FM Akure and we're transmitting from Ilara Moki. After the break, Thai police arrest woman for killing 12 friends. Details of this story and more in just a moment. Please join us again.
many thanks for staying tuned for news update and live streaming please visit our website www.adaba889.fm or download adaba fm app on google play store you can be part of us on our social media platforms www.facebook.com forward slash adaba fm 88.9 on facebook at adaba 89 fm on instagram and adaba fm tv on youtube to provide us information you can reach us via email newsroom at adaba 889.fm Chinese Defense Minister Li Shangfu has arrived in India to attend a key security summit meeting amid strained ties between the countries. Mr. Li will attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Defense Minister's meeting on Friday in the Indian capital, Delhi. This is the first visit to India by a Chinese Defense Minister since a deadly clash between their troops in 2020. At least 20 Indian and four Chinese soldiers were killed. The sides have had other confrontations since then, with the most recent flare-up happening in December at Tawang in the northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh. Thai police say they have arrested a woman suspected of killing 12 of her friends and acquaintances by poisoning them with Sandy. Sarat Rangsweet was arrested in Bangkok on Tuesday following recent inquiries into a friend's death. The victim's family had raised suspicions after she died on a trip with Sarah Rat earlier this month. Following inquiries, police said they believe Sarah Rat had killed 11 others, including an ex-boyfriend. Police allege that she killed for financial reasons, and Sarah Rat has denied all the charges. Meanwhile, Thai authorities have denied her bail. Authorities also say the... Other alleged victims had died in a similar way but did not disclose further information. They said the murders began in 2020. And now sports. Frank Lampard admitted that angry Chelsea fans had every right to boo his team after they suffered a fifth successive defeat in a dismissal 2-0 setback against Brentford on Wednesday. Says... Uh, Cesar's own goal and Brian Bermud's late strike condemned Lampard to his latest demoralizing loss since replacing the sack Graham Potter. Graham Potter. Chelsea have failed to score in six of their last seven games and are languishing in 11th place in the Premier League. They have not won in any competition since March 11 at Leicester, a winless run that now stands at eight games. Six of those eight winless matches have come at Stamford Bridge and Chelsea supporters let rip after losing to West London neighbours Brentford who have traditionally been in their shadow but are now above them in the table. And now to end global news, a recap of our top stories. Fighting is continuing in parts of Sudan despite a 72-hour ceasefire. We also brought you news that the U.S. and South Korea have secured a landmark deal to counter the North Korean nuclear threat. And finally, Thai police say they have arrested a woman suspected of killing 12 of her friends and acquaintances by poisoning them. And that's it on Global News as edited by Sunday Ajiboye. I am Muninkola Ugidon. Many thanks for listening. Good afternoon.